All right, in this video, we're going to do another trigonometric substitution uh, involving a definite integral. So we've got ln uh, of 3 halves to ln of 3, e to the x times the square root of 9 minus e to the 2x. So the first thing I've done is just kind of rewrite the e to the 2x as e to the x squared. So again, if I solve this just kind of out of the blue, um, I would be thinking either u substitutions, or again, I see the square root. I kind of see 9 minus something squared. I would think maybe eventually we can do a trig substitution. First, I'm going to do just a plain old u substitution, and I'm going to let u equal e to the x, because du is going to be e to the x dx, and that's going to help me replace a lot of stuff here. So we'll have to change uh, the limits of integration. We'll do that in a second. The e to the x dx, that's going to become our du. And then underneath the radical, we would have 9 minus, well, u squared. To get our new limits of integration, it said it was when x equals ln of 3. So if x equals ln of 3, we'll get u equals e to the ln of 3, which is just 3. And likewise, when we take e to the ln of 3 over 2, we just get 3 over 2. So okay, we've got our new limits of integration. Now we just need to do our trig substitution. And as far as a trig sub goes, this is not, you know, not too terrible. So here we're going to let um, u equal, so we take the square root of the number, which is 3. And in this case, we're going to use sine theta. So du will be 3 cosine theta d theta. And now again, we can just plug things in. So we would have the square root of 9 minus u squared, which is going to be 9 sine squared theta du will be 3 cosine theta d theta. And again, since this is a definite integral, we can figure out our new limits of integration. So again, it said the upper limit was when u equals 3. So now we've got to plug it into the left side. So we get 3 equals 3 sine theta, or 1 equals sine theta. Uh, so sine of pi over 2 is what equals 1 um, on the... the uh, interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Um, when we look at uh, 3 halves, we'll get 3 halves equals 3 sine theta. Uh, if we multiply both sides by 1 third, we'll get 1 half equals sine theta. Let's see, I always have to stop and think, so that's going to be uh, pi over 6. Uh, so sine of pi over 6 will be 1 half. And now, um, again, it's just doing the uh, kind of the, the algebra and the trig identity. So We've got the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2. We could, again, factor the 9 out and have 1 minus sine squared theta. We've got 3 cosine theta d theta. Okay, so, so the 9 we can pull out as a 3. Uh, the 1 minus sine squared, that's going to be the same thing as cosine uh, squared, but then we'll take the square root, so we'll have a cosine theta. But then we have our three um, cosine theta d theta. So really we've got the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2 of 9 times cosine squared theta d theta. So now, all right, we get to keep on going. Um, so now the question is, okay, well, how do we integrate, uh, you know, cosine squared? And recall for this one, we have to use another trig identity. So lots of identities and lots of substitutions in this one. Um, so pi over 6 to pi over 2, there's our 9. Recall the identity for cosine squared theta that we're going to use. Uh, we use 1 half, 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. Okay, so we could pull the uh, one half out and have nine halves. I'm just going to pull that out front. So we have nine halves pi over six to pi over two, um, and now we'll have one plus cosine of two theta d theta. Okay, so this isn't terrible to integrate. Uh, we'll get a theta, and then uh, the antiderivative of cosine two theta is going to be sine two theta over two. And then all of this is going to get evaluated from pi over 6 to pi over 2. 
Now, normally, remember, with the uh, indefinite integrals, we had to do the right triangle and all that stuff to get back to our original variable. So this is the good thing about just finding the new limits of integration. You just now can plug all of this stuff in and uh, evaluate it. So we'll plug in pi over 2. So there it is. Then we would get sine of, well, 2 times pi over 2, which would give us pi, all of that over 2. Minus, we'll plug in the lower limit of integration, so we'll get a pi over 6 uh, plus sine of, okay, so 2 times pi over 6 will be pi over 3. All of that, again, is divided by 2. And, oh, all right, I guess let's uh, simplify this at least a little bit. So this is 9 halves pi over 2. Um, let's see, sine of pi, sine of pi is 0. So sine of pi over 2 will be 0. It's the upper limit. We've got minus pi over 6. We would have minus, let's see, pi, uh, sine of pi over 3. That's root 3 over 2 all over 2. So I almost feel like saying, you know, I'll leave this as an exercise to the viewer. Um, I guess let's keep going here a little bit. Uh, 9 halves. Um, actually, I think I'm going to... So we can make that square root of 3 over 4. You could even factor a 1 half out, which would give us 9 over 4. And then we would have pi minus pi over 3 minus root 3 over 2. And I think I'm going to leave it like that for now. So uh, I think you got the gist of it at this point. Um, you know, so again, lots of little steps in this one. You know, I think a hard... Uh, some of the hard thing about integrating these uh, functions is just recognizing what to do. But, you know, to me, uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, if the limits of integration have natural logarithms in it of numbers, well, you know, E gets rid of natural logarithms. So, uh, to me, that the even the limits of integration kind of give me a clue as to maybe I should do a U substitution at the beginning um, because that's going to make everything work out with nice numbers. And um, so, you know, think about things like that. Use things like that to your advantage when you're going through it. Um, or at least, you know, consider it. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But to me, these uh, limits of integration would make me think about uh, a U substitution. And then hopefully once you got it to this part, you'd say, oh, you know, now I can do a trig substitution. And uh, then you're kind of off and running.